Yeah, it's been a, it's been a busy time, um, of course, and, uh, and I think it's come in, in phases. So, of course, as we saw um, the virus emerge in, uh, in Asia, um, uh, and we have property out in, in Asia, uh, understanding how we would deal with, with, with that and the threat that it posed uh, there, um, and looking at it from, from uh, here in Europe and um, both dealing with the, with the issue out in, in Asia, ensuring the, the well-being of our team members and our guests, um, and also, of course, the financial well-being. Um, and trying to anticipate what the impact would be on business here in, in Europe and, of course, in our interest in the US. Um, so that, that really was the start of the process. Um, and I think as it becomes, or as it became uh, clearer um, and, and the first sort of cases here in Europe and, and the impact that was having, again, the focus really starts to be, okay, how do we ensure that the, uh, the, the well-being of our, of our team members, the well-being of guests, um, what are the protocols we need to have in place in case we do have a reported infection? Um, all of that uh, needed to be put into place. So really, look, it was a planning process um, to that end and simultaneously dealing with the impact it has on our business. Um, huge amounts of cancellations, um, so processing those cancellations, ensuring that uh, as a company we were clear on, on, on our promise to our guests, um, demonstrating to them um, our loyalty to them because we believe that um, by granting that cancellation even if it was a, 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 a non-flexible rate um, that would generate and foster loyalty for us that was a really important message so processing those cancellations kept us busy um, and starting to understand um, uh, how as a business we were going to operate through a period where, where we had the prevalence of, uh, of COVID-19 and then the restrictions uh, come into place so as to start to Im impose lockdown in certain territories. What does that mean simply from an operations perspective, whether the hotels are able to trade or not trade, um, and, uh, and, and dealing with the consequences of that, dealing with the well-being again of the team members that, that still had to travel to work if the hotels were open, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and their well-being, the anxiety that they had, um, and, uh, and for the guests coming into the space. And of course, at some point, you reach a level where occupancies are, uh, are are almost zero um, and, uh, and, and you sort of things start to bottom out um, and at that point really planning uh, actually for the future um, so starting to see what it was that uh, we could do differently that we needed to do differently um, both in the short term um, as when the restrictions were lifted and we'd operate but actually also longer term in terms of you know the buzzword the new normal um, what, what that would look like and predicting that and how we could use the time when perhaps guests weren't in our business um, to accelerate development that we had in place so we could really come out that much stronger uh, and further differentiate ourselves from our competitors um, to give us that advantage as business started to come back. And that's really um, the phase that we're in at the moment uh, is the implementation of some of those uh, uh, strategies um, to, to ensure that we, yeah, we, we uh, increase our competitive advantage. So uh, I think the, the, the principal part of, of, what we, of what we saw anyway in Citizen M is we had a very uh, lean model here already and we had adopted already technology um, uh, through kiosk, uh, use of kiosk. Um, we already had the ability to, um, through an app, to uh, check in prior to your stay um, and, uh, um, and, so, uh, and, and in room the use of an iPad uh, to control everything within the room. Um, already uh, those sorts of uh, pieces of technology were already in place. What we've sought to do is enhance those um, and, uh, and accelerate uh, the functionality that exists uh, within that. Um, and uh, whilst we saw the iPad already as a relatively uh, safe um, piece because cleaning an iPad is easier than cleaning the buttons on a remote control, um, uh, we still felt that a guest uh, would prefer to use their own device. Um, so um, within our hotels, um, where the iPad controls the television, the blinds, the lights, the air conditioning, um, the ability for a guest to be able to do that through their own device uh, is the sort of enhancement that we've had um, to really develop a full contact experience. So you can, you can of course, continue to check in online, uh, but now that you can open your room directly with your phone, uh, in itself, you can choose your room. So effectively replacing the kiosk um, functionality where you need to uh, interact with a kiosk, now you're doing that all through your, through your own device, through the app. Um, and that, that really is probably the most significant 
uh, evolution that, uh, that we've taken from a technology perspective and certainly from a guest perspective. The main challenge is around uh, the technologies uh, that exist within a hotel. Um, and uh, very often those different technologies can be somewhat fragmented um, and how they uh, interact with one another um, is, is, a, is a puzzle. Um, and what Citizen M has sought to do is, um, and again we had, uh, had an architecture in place that allowed us to, to deal with this, but really uh, try and ensure that we are consolidating um, that information uh, around uh, and, and, and how we consolidate the, uh, the different systems in a way that through a single application you are able to control multiple applications. So that's been a core piece of the development that we needed to undertake um, and, uh, and bring live. Whilst historically we had um, good access to uh, data on the guest in terms of uh, name, contact details, perhaps where they're travelling from, their purpose for their trip, we also had data relating to a guest in terms of, or guests, of how they used our room. So what movies they might want to watch, uh, what temperatures they set their room, what their preference for their light colour is. Um, so all of that information uh, was available to us, but our ability to associate it with guests has been limited. Um, but by consolidating that now, what we're able to do is start to much better understand you as an individual uh, that's staying within our hotel and ensure that we can uh, personalise your stay uh, to your needs. Um, and that's really a lot of the work that's been going on so that we can now ensure that uh, if you uh, have a preference that your room is set at 20 degrees, that at the moment that you check in that your room is at 20 degrees. Um, that if we know that you like a particular blockbuster film, we can make sure that the recommendation, as you might get through uh, Netflix, that we can make that recommendation to you if you like this, then how about that? Uh, and the same thing with things like room allocation. If we know that you like a particular room on a particular floor, um, at the moment when you look to check in, we can make a recommendation of the rooms that we think that you would like based on previous stay. Um, so that's the, the work that we really want to um, uh, now further uh, enhance um, to create that personalization for, for, for our guests. I think Citizen M has long positioned itself as a tech forward company anyway, so I think that our position since we, uh, we started the business in 2008 that tech is, a, is instrumental to, to progress and I think you only have to look at the uh, ever increasing adoption of technology through society to realise um, that, that we're on a, on a particular trajectory. I think what we've seen in hospitality is it's been fairly slow um, uh, as an industry necessarily to embrace that. Um, and not, that's not necessarily through uh, uh, a lack of desire to embrace it, but the nature of how hospitality is developed um, perhaps inhibits um, it to really uh, embrace technology effectively. Um, and I think that what uh, has happened over the last few months has, uh, not, has meant that companies no longer have a choice or that actually there's such a call to action um, that they've forced to innovate and forced to push some of this stuff through. Um, and I think that that's, yeah, that's really been a catalyst. It's only um, served to speed up the, the, the speed of change. Um, and I think that there, there perhaps has also been a, a certain reticence to em engage with technology for the sense that it is not in itself service. Um, and what Citizen M's position has always been, and I think, um, I believe that this is um, now um, uh, being borne out, um, is that using technology to manage process um, and having people free to uh, engage with people is a really important combination. Um, so, so therefore we can use technology to remove friction from the experience. Um, we can use it to um, uh, yeah, compensate for, um, for having uh, people deliver that process. So you can end up with a much leaner workforce which promotes social distancing where a guest in themselves is able to own their experience and feel comfortable in doing that. Um, and yeah, principally, it's, it's, it's how you effectively blend. You can still deliver great service by human-to-human -human contact, um, where it is simply a question of ha making someone feel better about themselves or, or a genuine human connection, um, and where technology then manages the process that might be a check-in or um, getting into your room or getting your key. All of that stuff for us is, is a process um, and isn't what fundamentally builds uh, deeper relationships.